Hi, this is Kate from Isalicious Designs. Somebody had actually mentioned that they were very interested in learning some basic stitches of um, the Amagurumi uh, crochet with loom bands. And um, while I have a couple of easier tutorials out there, I agree it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to go through on this particular tutorial on just a few of the stitches. We're not going to make anything, just a few of the stitches so that you can get familiar. Now, one of the first things that you'll need to learn to make is what they call a magic ring. And we do ours a little bit differently because we're dealing with bands, single bands, and not a whole you know, thing of yarn. So to do our magic ring, usually you would do it on your hook but it can get very difficult to see what you're doing because when you do the magic ring you wrap your band around your hook say three times and then you're pulling your single ring your single band through and reclaiming and then you're taking the one closest to you up and over as if you were doing a slip knot but you have to hold this little end cap here, those three little rings, and push your hook back through it and grab another one and pull it through and do the same thing again, but this time you're just dealing with this band here. And you take the top over and now you have to join these together again, like so. And then you go back through the end cap, leaving this on here you have to go back through the end cap again and pull through another. Now this can get a little bit confusing. You can lose where you're at very easily. So here we go, you see this is this is what we're doing as, as we go around and making this little ring. So it's a lot easier to actually do it using your loom. And there's a variety of different ways you can do it. Um, I will show you. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's our, our loom. You're just going to use one peg. I'm going to use this one. I have the open part of the peg pointing away from me. I'm going to take my single band that will be what we would call our end cap. And I'm going to stretch it and twist it around once and twice so that there's three loops on there okay and then what you're going to do depending how big your magic ring needs to have to be it, it, you might have only five um you know it might call for a magic ring of five stitches or six stitches so you get the amount of bands that you need to make that you're going to push your hook through the bands okay so you've gone through the center of the peg and you grab your first band and you pull it back through and reclaim. And you're going to do a little slip knot, but we're not pulling any of these slip knots tightly. So you take the side closest to you and move it up and over. So you have a little slip knot. Keep that loop on your hook, but move it around a little bit so the slip knot is further around the peg. You're going to push your hook back through the red bands and pull your next one through like so now you have three loops on your on your loom on your hook again these two this one is the original loop these two are your new band take the middle one up and over like a slip knot now you have two slip knots on your hook you're going to take the first one up and over so that it's joined together with this new second one. And again, move it around. Push your hook back through. Let's do our third. And pull it through. And there's your new band. You're going to do a slip knot with your new band. The one closest to you, up and over. You now have two slip knots. Join them together by putting the one closest to you up and over. And do you see how we're forming these little sort of teardrops? This is how we make our magic ring. Push through again, pull it through, reclaim, take the middle one, which is the band of the new band, one loop of the new band over the second loop of the new band, 
and then join your two loops together. Push around, back through. Taking the first loop over the second, joining them together. One more time. Pull it through. Reclaim. This is your band here. Do your little slip knot and then join them together like that. Then you can take it off your loom. You, you don't really need your loom anymore after that. What you would do then is spread this around, okay, so that it's evenly spaced. Now sometimes, if you're following a pattern, it might ask you to do a magic ring with 10 stitches or a magic ring with four stitches, depending how big. So, for example, if you're doing a Santa hat or a witch's hat, the point of the hat would be very small and you might only have four stitches. Now to count them, you're looking for the teardrops. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. The sixth one is actually on our hook. And when we join it here, that becomes number six. And these are called stitches. So if you poke your hook through that first stitch, okay, and you take a single band. Now this next stitch is called a slip stitch. And what you do, you put your band, and I'm gonna actually, let me use a different color so you can see exactly what I'm doing. It's not like we're making anything. I'll use white and you can see what we're doing. So if you use a different color, this is a slip stitch. A slip stitch will go through that first stitch, but then it goes through this, this last stitch as well, like that, and reclaim. So if you count now, you've got your one, two, three, four, five, and six, and this is your slip stitch. And again, you would put this one over this one, like that. Now, if you were doing a slip stitch, on every single round to go a, to do a stitch in every single one of these is called a round if you were to do a slip stitch at the beginning of every round you would end up with something that it, it's I'm trying to think the best way to describe it. it it's going to be more even than if you were to do a spiral when you're changing colors when you're doing a spiral you can see where the new colour has started if you change colours. Whereas if you were doing this, you can't really see. I mean, here's my round of red and then my round of white starts because of this slip stitch. This is the new one. So if we were doing this, the next thing that you would normally do for a magic ring is increase it to make it bigger. And you do that by an, a stitch called the increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. Each of these is a stitch. So we've got one slip stitch in this stitch. If we were doing um, a, a single crochet, you put your hook through your first stitch. So this is my first stitch through my first stitch like this and you would take your band and you pull it through and you reclaim it so that it's on your hook. You're going to take this side up and over so you formed a little slip knot. But we've also formed a little slip knot here with our slip stitch to join them. It's just as you did with your magic ring. Take one over the other. All right. Now that is called a single crochet. Then you move to your next stitch, which is this one here. And to do an increase, again, is two single crochets in this one stitch, but you have to do them one at a time. So here is our first single crochet. Do your slip knot and join them. Then go back through that single that, that single stitch and do your second single crochet crochet up and over and then join the two stitches together like this. So this is called doing an increase because what you're doing is we started with six stitches in our magic ring and this should increase our stitches because we're doubling them to 12. 
all right and as you get better you get a little faster and you'll find that you don't use your fingernails to pull them over what you'll be doing is just using your hook so let's do another increase we go through this one so you use your hook and you twist it twist it and twist it instead of using your fingernails and it gets a little bit quicker but it does take practice so now you've learned how to do a single crochet and an increase which is just two single crochets in the same so here's our single crochet and you do up and over so that you have your slip knot and then join it and then to do your increase you go back through that same stitch and do your second one in the same spot let's go back through this one here single crochet and then do our increase by going in again like this now oops that's quite a good example if you drop your stitches it doesn't really matter because they're all little knots so pop your hook back in the first one that you can get and all you do is re-loop them it's not a huge deal at all really and if you do completely have one that unties you can just tie it back in again now if we want to do a spiral instead of doing a slip stitch which was and I'll change color again which was where we put our stitch our, our band through one and then joined the other one on that same stitch to do a slip stitch to do a spiral you just keep going so you would put your your band in like this and do your single crochet and join and this would be our beginning where we would put our marker to indicate that this is the beginning of our round and then if you're just doing a single crochet all the way around you would just do one single crochet in each stitch so here's our next stitch and you'll see that it's easier to notice that you've changed color but usually that only happens at the beginning of each round and it doesn't really show too badly but as long as you mark where your first round is now the shape that you are working on is obviously a round because we're doing a circle and because I'm not increasing how many stitches are in this circle I'm just doing a single crochet you can see that things are beginning to form like a little concave so I'm just doing a single crochet all the way around So if you were doing a ball or a hat or something like that this is how you make it sort of form the little curved in shape so this is be our last stitch here and then we would go this is our first stitch again so we would go in to our first stitch but do you see how the colors bleed in so this this red is sort of in that form you know where the white is so that's how it can be easily seen what's happening now as you can see we're working in both of these loops there's the inside loop which is this one here and there's the outside loop which is this one here and they form different things and they can allow your shape to do different things so normally you would probably just work in both loops but if you then decided well I'm going to work in the outside loop and just push your hook through the outside as you go around you'll notice that your shape 
changes. So I'm just going to do, I'm actually going to do a single crochet followed by an increase, followed by a single, followed by an increase. So in a pattern that would read single crochet is SC and then increase, you'd have a, a comma and then it would be I and C and then comma and then single increase. And that indicates to you that you would do one single crochet in the first stitch and then in the second stitch you would do two and in the third stitch you would do one and in the fourth stitch you would do two so I'm just working on the outside loop to show you what will happen. And how it changes. This will almost look like a brim of a hat. Oops, come back here. So at the moment I'm doing a single crochet followed by an increase. And I'm working in the outside loop. Here's my last stitch here. Like that. Do you see how it's sort of, if you were to continue, it would um, sort of sit up. It has like a little ridge to it now. It's like a little brim. I don't know if you can see particularly well. But that, that would be like a little ridge. Okay. Now, and again, can you see how the white bleeds into the red at this particular spot, which is our beginning, because we're not doing a slip stitch, we're just doing a spiral. Now, if you worked in the inside ring, and we'll try that, and I'm just going to do a single crochet, again, it will look different. And I'm just using the inside loop here and it will change how things look. It almost gives you um, like a, a an edge. So whereas uh, working on the outside sort of gives you the the brim, this sort of then comes in. Can you see how that looks? It's kind of hard to ship it. There you go. Do you see how it sort of has this little angle to it? It's coming straight down. So you can have a bit of a play with different uh, ways of, of doing this. So you're just working on the inside loop. Come on. And I know sometimes people say, I'm going too fast. It gets to a stage where if you're not going at your own speed, you sort of make mistakes. <laughs> so it's easier for people to slow, slow your video down if they're watching you than it is for you to slow down. 
because otherwise you end up do you know you do make little mistakes but if you know what the whole round the stitches for the whole round are going to be like if I tell you that the round is going to be for this next round we're going to do single crochet well then you know what you have to do and you just keep doing it until the next round and then you can start me again and listen to what the next round is going to be so here we are we're nearly at the end of this particular round and it's very easy for me to see what what uh, where I'm at where the beginning and end is because I'm using different colors for each but here we are at the beginning again and as you can see it's sort of formed that little lip do you see that all right so again this and you know it, again it sort of looks like a, a little hat or a, it could be I don't know we're not making anything so this is working in a round now there are other things that you need to learn when you're doing this as well which is how to decrease it's all very well that you can get bigger 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 but what happens if you need to get smaller so to decrease now first of all the first thing that I'm going to do is um, do a single crochet here and I'm going through both loops for this so single crochet now to do a decrease you're going to go through the front of both loops of your next stitch twist your hook and pull it so that you're going through the front of the second stitch the one next to it so you have both of these stitches you're working on both of these stitches and you're basically combining these two stitches together to form one to reduce things down so and I'm going to use white to show you so take a single band now because we're working in bands it's nice and easy you pull this through the first loop but then you have to pull it through the second as well so I stretch the bands and pull it through so it's like that on both reclaim and then you do your single crochet as normal now normally when they're doing a decrease they don't want you to go and decrease really really quickly so you'll do a decrease followed perhaps by a single crochet so that it's a gradual decrease okay so there's my single crochet and then the next one you go through the front of the first stitch and then through the front of the second stitch and we'll do a second decrease like this one over the other and join them together and then we just worked on this one so then we'll, this is our next stitch here a single crochet now when you get to the end of something and you want to you know start tying it off this is what you do you do your decreases so here we're going to go through the front and through the next stitch single band drag it through and reclaim one over the other and join followed by a single crochet and as you can see now what's happened is we have fewer of these and do another decrease followed by a single crochet next we'll do a decrease followed afterwards by a single crochet decrease and followed by a single crochet and we're back to the beginning again like that but you can see how that's now 
pulled it all in. You can see, like that. So you have this almost like a little, little pocket in here, like that. You can make a hat, hat for your Barbie. <laughs> but there you go. Now that's working in a round. Not everything is in a round. Sometimes you're going to be working in strips like this. And what you would do, you would chain however many they tell you. So for example, we'll chain, we'll start with an end cap and we'll chain six or ten. So you do a single chain, just like normal, just like we would on our loom. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we've chained ten. Okay, what we're going to do is like a little slip knot here at the end. So take one over the other, but don't make it tight. Now, if you have a look, here are our little teardrops. We need to push our hook through the centre of the teardrop. Okay, so that's on the top. We're going through the side. I'm going to use a different colour. Take your next band and you're working through the side of it and you would do in this instance a single crochet then you go through the next side one so you're working through the side of it and do a single crochet through the next one and this is how I do the awareness ribbons so if you're looking for something to do that's easy to start practicing, I would definitely recommend doing one of my awareness ribbons so you can practice getting some of these stitches down. So it's just like working in the magic ring, except we're working in a straight line here. And this could be used for scarfs and you can do ears like this. Obviously this is a would be a very big one. I did the beard for my Santa using um, a chain. So I'm at my last stitch here. Now at the end, here's our end cap. I usually poke my hook through that if I want to go around the other side and I do a single crochet in that as well. Now if I was going to go to the other side you have to go around this corner. It's a good idea to do two in the corner in this in this one spot. So I've gone through my my um, end cap here. If I was going to start doing a cro single crochet down this side as well I would do another extra one or two stitches even to make it so that I can go around this little corner I'm showing you here before I would then do here to do my next single crochet and work down the back. It just gives you that extra little bit to go around the curve. If you weren't doing that if, for example, you were doing like the beard for Santa, you stop here. What you have to do is pinch here with your fingers, take your hook out and put your hook back the other way and turn this around and then you can start working the other direction. And I should have used a red. Let me do, let me use a red so you can see what I'm doing. So you'd start working the other direction. Now you can go through this first one again but usually you would probably skip that one 
to the next one like this to draw things in and you would do your single crochets like this and at this stage all we're doing is single crochets we're not doing double crochets or anything like that they get a little bit trickier when you're using bands with yarn it's a completely different story so as you can see I'm just doing single crochets till I get to the end through this one and then again I would pinch take my hook out place it around the other way turn around skip this one and move to my next stitch and this is doing sort of like it, it's it's um, decreasing as I go like this but I mean, there are loads of other things that you can do while doing this this sort of thing they might ask you to do something completely different but this I could use as a ruffle around a neck or as I said you can make it straight and you can twist them and uh, you know make a tie or something like that you know you can make a, a bow but um, they are the basics that single crocheting increasing decreasing how to make your magic ring, how to work in a round, how to work in a straight. Okay, but that should get you started. And as I said, have a look at one of my awareness ribbons, the Pink Breast Cancer Awareness Ribbons. And that is a really good uh, design to start practicing some of these stitches so that you can become confident in starting to crochet with loom bands. Good luck with it. Take care.